doing great. If you didn't think our government is crazy enough, well, we figured out a way of bringing you something crazier. That's right. This is out of Zero Hedge. U.S. to keep paying salaries for tens of thousands of Ukrainians during the government shutdown. I guess there are some people in Ukraine that need their government salaries to keep uh, guarding those servers from the Democratic Party <laughs> for blackmail. I mean, just for security. Okay, let's dive right into this story, shall we? But you know what? First, a poll. Type one if you think our government is completely off their rocker. Type two if you think, no, this is totally normal behavior. And type three if you think you are ready, are getting ready right now to take advantage of this madness. That is right. You see, when people say this time it's different, we're not gonna have an economic crash. We're not gonna have a housing crash. This time is different. <laughs> Morons. I'm not joking. This is getting exciting. And I'm just waiting to see if I can get an Uber to go get something to eat. Oh, just so you know, this room brought to you by Hampton Inn. It's not, a, it's not an ad, um, but there's some really creepy uh, curtains. I'm not a big fan. All right, sorry, let's just stay on topic. A newly aired 60 minute segment entitled The Unexpected Way American Tax Dollars Are Being Used in Ukraine <laughs> for like F-35s, I mean, uh, Abrams tanks. I mean, oh, sorry. Sorry, that's right. Abram tanks have just been delivered. We're not in a proxy war with Russia. That's not cocaine in the White House. <sighs> this 60 Minutes uh, thing has uncovered that the U.S. government is paying the salaries of some 57,000 Ukrainian civic services personnel. Like I said, they need to keep hiding the U.S. secrets that are in Ukraine. This is very important. Jesse, thank you so much for the super chat. Says the report details the various ways non-military aid is being spent at the moment. GOP congressional leaders are intensely debating whether to move forward with a proposed defense budget that includes Biden's push for $24 billion more in military assistance for Kiev. If this causes your blood to boil, type five, because I'm not joking, it completely is making my blood boil. We are facing down the shotgun, the terrible barrel shotgun of an economic collapse in our country. And we have a complete clown show going on in the White House. But here's the good news. If we didn't have a total clown show, bunch of tools running around trying to find a toolbox to hide in, kind of scenario in our White House right now, we wouldn't know just how dirty and just how prideful and just how vindictive these people are. So to be honest with you, I'm completely excited about this. But it also pisses me off. Now, can I just sit around and be pissed? Nope. We need to move into action. We need to hold the wealth of this country. They are going to implement a plan, a multi-pronged plan, to make Americans scared and put them into a position where they are hurting financially, emotionally, and in a bunch of different other ways. So it says right here, 60 Minutes discovers the U.S. is financing more than weapons in Ukraine. The government is buying seeds and fertilizer for farmers, paying the salaries of 57,000 first responders and subsidizing small businesses. All at the same time, President Biden is going to the picket lines to show his solidarity for people that are being affected by inflation. Inflation that he is part of the creation because they're printing more money to send to Ukraine. Think about this. Producing bills and laws such as the Inflation Reduction Act, um, making sure that your posts are being banned or halted on social media. That's where we're spending money right now because they don't want the truth out. I, I'd be remiss not to share the absolute truth with you. Not only that this is a total and utter clown show, but because this is very, this is real. And type seven if you agree, type eight if you disagree with this, 2024 is gonna be a year of chaos. And you shouldn't fear it, you should expect it. So when you see it, you get it and you're like, all right, I know why they're doing this. They don't want you voting in person. They're afraid of that. They've been rigging votes for a long time and they're afraid, but they're gonna have to cause so much chaos. And part of that chaos is gonna be a supply chain disruption so that they can come up with an answer. Remember Hitler 
came into power, Casey Hughes voted in because he had an answer to the hyperinflation of the Weimar Republic. And this is very scary. And so they have to create, and we, we know throughout history that it's been proven that the burning was of the Reichsbomb uh, happened through Hitler's people. And like Hillary Clinton says and other people before, don't ever let a good you know, crisis go to waste. What if there's not a crisis? Well, then some people have to form a crisis. Now, a lot of us see these crisis building, these starting. And I want you to know there's no stopping them. But if we don't take advantage of them, because they're going to, the banks are going to buy up your homes. They're going to make you eternal renters. Then that's it. We got one shot at this. Now it's a multi-year plan, but we have one shot at this. The story goes on, and it says here, the U.S. has spent just over $43 billion on mil military aid to Ukraine since Russia invaded. I actually do not believe that number. I believe that you're going to see even more num uh, money being spent coming out uh, in the near future. I, I believe you're going to see this revelation coming out before January. It says that's equivalent to about 5% of the American defense budget. So if those numbers are real, to comprehend that we've spent 5% of the American defense budget on another country to fight a country in a proxy war, that is insane. European countries combined have contributed around 30 billion, the 60 minute reports narrative narrates. And this also includes the following stunning detail. American taxpayers are financing more than just weapons. We discovered the US government's buying seeds and fertilizer for Ukrainian farmers and covering the salaries of Ukrainians' first responders, all 57,000 of them. That includes a team that trains this rescue dog named Joy. Let me stop there. Hitler had his own private police force. Put it down in the comment section what the name of it was. It more than a military. I believe what we are paying for are, is an armed guard to help hide what our government's been hiding in Ukraine all this time. And you know how serious the words that I'm talking about are. But I can't stop but share this. It says here, political commentator Colin Rudd has noticed or noted in relation to the potential government shutdown looming October 1st. Yes, your tax taxpayers will be used to fund Ukrainian salaries while American citizens are forced to wait for their pay while the government remains closed. Type nine if you think this is egregious. Type 10 if you think, no, this is cool. If you think this is cool, you don't belong on this channel. Hit the unsubscribe, hit the thumbs down, and leave. You're a coward. Our country was not built on cowards. It wasn't built on... It was built on the backs of amazingly heroic men and women that stood up for what they believed in. You know, today... I've had this channel for three years and I've had the blessing of getting to know so many of you. And this channel, part of the branding was about my hair, <laughs> the brohawk. And I'm all for self-expression, but I gotta be honest with you. I, I ran past a lot of people with crazy colored hair today and it wasn't, uh, <laughs> it wasn't a sign of strength a sign of having fun. It was people trying their hardest to break out, but you could tell these people were, are, are scared of their own shadow and they're just trying to act out. Our nation is going soft. We have to stop this fast. They're affecting our children because this is a multi-decade approach that, Satan has taken and his demonic entities 
and people that follow him. I, I've been in public places where people are wearing satanic garb and they think that it's cool. And they don't understand how controlled they are. We've got to do something about this now. This is why I've promoted and not promoted for investment advice or like that, but I've, I've talked about learning about the difference of fiat money versus gold and silver, learning the difference between being out of debt and being a slave to being out of debt and being in control. Um, the, the difference of being a victim of economic uh, cycles as opposed to being on top of economic cycles and taking advantage of them. We are witnessing right now tyranny in the highest levels of our government. And this is yet one other ex amazing example that we would go through a government shutdown, which I, I'm pretty 99% sure we're going through one because it's going to be used to force both ends of the aisle, which I think are completely heinous. We need to get rid of all these morons that have been uh, career politicians, including our president. Um, We need to get rid of these dinosaurs that have been in our government that are bought and paid for. The only way you do it is you run the country. You have the wealth. You see, the wealth is what has turned all these politicians wrong by wealthy individuals, Rothschilds, Vanderbilt's, all these you know, big organizations, these families. And they don't see it coming. They don't see you and I preparing. And this group of human beings around the world is getting big. Ninja Nation is going to be a force to reckon with because I believe that God has ordained us, has blessed us to think differently and they don't see us coming. I see this picture on of this tool that's running uh, this puppet that's running Ukraine, the boy band guy that, you know, wore tight leather pants and with our, what some would call a commander in chief. I think he's a drooler in chief right now, just, and, and it blows me away. But at the same time, I'm so pumped because I'm excited about our future. Type 11, if you're excited about our country's future, because you know, you're not alone. You're not the only one that feels this way. And you know, the people in our military, on the streets, in small town USA, and even some in the big cities are waking up and they're going, no, we ain't going to put up with this crap any longer. But we know that it comes through the wealth. And you are called to be wealthy. This is not a prosperity doctrine. I want you to understand that. Because prosperity doctrine is all about, you know, I'm just going to believe in something. I'm going to name it and claim it. And it takes no work out of your hands and you don't let any money go out of yours. This is understanding the authority we've been given by God. And we're here to claim the land. We're here to occupy the land. That ain't renting. That ain't leasing. It's ownership. And then we'd be good stewards with the land. We gave our ownership over back in the 50s and 60s to a pretty evil group. And they've been twisting our country into a death spiral ever since. And I'm telling you right now, there's about to be something that comes in 2024. It's going to be real bad. It's going to be real scary. But you have to send, that's when we strike. And my goal is to keep sounding the alarm, blowing the trumpet, the shofar, and, and making sure that you guys know, you gentlemen and ladies, that this agenda is going to end. And we're going to put a stop to this. I hope you... You know, it's funny. I started this whole video. I was going to talk about something, but... It says right here... Here's more than... Here's more from the 60 Minutes video featuring a training woman thanking U.S. taxpayers for footing the bill for Ukrainian employees thanks to USAID funding. And this comes from Tatiana Abramova. Especially in the condition of war, we have to work. 
We have to pay taxes. We have to pay wages, salary to our employees. We have to work. Don't stop. And Holly Williams says, why does that help Ukraine win the war? Tatiana says, because economy is the foundation of everything. Think about that phrase. She says, economy is the foundation of everything. Our economy is collapsing right now. We're losing the world's reserve currency status, which I don't blame the rest of the world for how they look at us. Our economy is collapsing. And what she said is perfect. The economy is the foundation of everything. Well, the foundation is about to crumble because it's built on lies. So the question is, type 12, are you getting ready? And as people start to type that, type 13 if you're not, you don't believe in any of this stuff. But type 12 if you're getting ready. And for anybody that doesn't understand what Ninja Nation is, a bunch of people, it will be millions of people by the time this thing tips off in January. People that are prepared and not scared, look at what everyone's typing right now. If you want to be on the winning side, you need to be part of the team that's ready for this. Do not rely on the government for help. Don't wait around for them when your water gets tainted. Have your water filter. Don't freak out when there's no food because we spent all the money on farmers and seeds in Ukraine. Have food ready. Get your personal balance sheet in order and then look at that list of people that are typing 12 right now. And remember this, you ain't alone. And these people right here that are typing 12, they got a lot of heart. And we're gonna remind all of the weaklings in this country, don't worry, sucks you lost your house. We'll rent it back to you and we'll be good to you. Because this country wasn't built on weak-minded, purple-haired people. It wasn't built on safe spaces. It wasn't built on multi-gendered bathrooms where you gotta be concerned with the safety of your child when you go into a public restroom because a grown wuss, not man, a wuss, wants to go to the restroom next to him. It was built on amazing human beings. And I believe that that spirit is still here, but it's a sleeping lion. And I'm calling it out in the name of Jesus Christ that the lions awake and understand how big of a deal this is. And if you want to beat them, you got to beat them in the pocketbook. A foul of poverty is a lie from Satan himself. It's a doctrine of demons. If you think that a white knight's going to come and pay off all your bills, I'm telling you right now, you're going to be waiting a long time. My grandparents believed that in the early 80s. They died penniless. It's a doctrine of demons. Faith without works is dead. Are you ready to stand up? Because if you're not, you don't have any right being here. Trust me. You don't do us or you any favors. I'm here to call the lions. Hope you got something out of this. The Economic Ninja is out. <laughs>